you tell us a little bit about yourself and um, you know, you know where you're located and what you do? Well, my name is Dr. David Kanitzer. I'm a licensed chiropractor. I've been a chiropractor for over 27 years now, and I've been in the healing arts for almost 40 years. I'm 59 years old, and uh, my uh, practice is a blend of balancing structure, biochemistry, the inner worlds, the energetic levels, also assisting people with handling stress and their communication skills. It's much harder today to help people get well than it was even 20 years ago because of the complexity of the stresses that people are under these days. I really see the energy field as primary. Even if you look at embryology, I think you can make a really good case for the fact that the the energy and information in the energy field is primary because once you have a fertilized egg, and the cells start dividing and they start moving along a particular axis and then they start specializing. A really good question to ask is how do the cells know how to do that? Because the embryologist will tell you that there's absolutely no sign of any nerve tissue. There's absolutely no sign of any nervous system in the embryo until the beginning of the third week. That brings up a really interesting question. What is guiding the development of the embryo during the first two weeks if there's no nervous system? Yeah, I think it's, was it Harold Burr? Or some, there's been some practitioners that, that really had some good evidence for like a, almost like a holographic field that, or energy field that was guiding the embryology, sort of. It's almost like the embryology was evolving into the field instead of right. creating, exactly. creating the field. So the field being more primary... So if you're a good scientist and you're open-minded, that question that I posed is a very powerful question, is what is guiding the development of the embryo in the first two weeks? Because it's not a random process. It's a very ordered process. It occurs almost always the same for people, and the timing is not random. The timing is very by design, and the axis in which the cells migrate is very non-random. And so a good scientist would say, now, wait a minute. If there's no nervous system at all in the embryo during the first two weeks, where is the intelligence for this? Where is the design? Where is the feedback system? And so in my mind, the field is primary. And then once the physical body starts developing a life of its own, then it's a communication process between the energy body and the physical body and of course there's a lot of factors that influence the energy body certainly the formation of the physical body is one of the things that feeds back into informing the energy body so it's a very dynamic living breathing process and the advantage of approaching things holistically from the energy field is that you're much less likely to do things that are going to produce side effects so for example when i'm contemplating an intervention that's biochemical, I can know in advance using the methods that I use whether the intervention that I'm making is going to be accepted and appreciated by the energy field. And because I believe the field is primary, there's now a quantum agreement that's established between the quantum field and the physical body such that I need to give much lower doses of things and the response is much faster and there's almost no side effects. It goes contrary to traditional, you know, medicine. It goes deeper than that. It's based on a worldview, kind of a tragic scientific materialistic worldview that there's this, you know, second law of thermodynamics that we're subject to where over time it's a one-way ticket to the grave and we're basically breaking down uh, and having greater entropy all the time and that uh, the body is not very intelligent and therefore we have to force it in the direction that the doctor thinks it should go. And that way of looking at the body can work pretty well in an emergency situation. Like, for example, if you have a broken bone, it makes a lot of sense to force the bone back in place. Or if you burned over 90% of your body and your normal immune mechanisms are shattered, it makes sense to give antibiotics. But those kinds of interventions, they work well in the short run. But... That's not what Americans are dying from these days. I'm trying to give some insight into why it's failing. It's failing because its view of the person and its view of the body doesn't work when it comes to managing long-term 
fascicles in the in the body. You, that yeah. kind of force that works in the short term, it actually backfires in the long run. And that's what you mm-hmm. wanted to talk about today was why does force backfire in the long run? And it yeah. backfires in the long run because the body ends up having to try to defend against the external force. It takes the body out of its normal mode of healing yeah. and regeneration and repair. And so unless you're dealing with an emergency situation, what you want to do is you want to catalyze the body's own healing power and intelligence. But if you're coming from a Newtonian, Cartesian, scientific, materialistic worldview, where you're not acknowledging that the body has an intelligence of its own that can be catalyzed, you're not going to end up playing that game. And so doctors like myself who see the body as a self-healing, self-regulating, dynamic, open system that sometimes just needs a little bit of help to get unstuck, that's it, or to be reminded of its perfect blueprint, to have some of the toxic influences removed or to have all the nutrients you need and those things, that's a totally different way of looking at the person in the body than the prevailing medical model today. And of course, one of the things that's influencing the energy field today, and one of the things that's influencing the physical body, are all the electromagnetic fields that we are swimming inside. And so the work that you guys are doing, that's helping the field and helping the body to recalibrate to its natural rhythms, that's an intervention that you can't force that onto the body because if it's too forceful, the body will end up trying to defend itself against the force instead of healing and reconnecting with its own natural intelligence and energy. And so it can be challenging when you're dealing with an American culture that's been indoctrinated into this forceful approach to to life and this idea that more is better, not familiar with homeopathy and other healing methods that work on the principles we discuss. It can be a challenging educational task to really get that message across. You know, one thing you might do is educate people about the fact that there are billions, literally billions of people in the world right in the world right now that use homeopathy as their prime healthcare system. Even though it's been suppressed quite a bit in this country, there are countries in the world where it is the major initial intervention and the whole idea of homeopathy is that we're using a very, very, very tiny stimulus to catalyze the body's own immune system, its own healing process, its own repair process. And, um, you know, I wanted to volunteer my time to say that after seeing thousands of patients, I can tell you that the sicker the patient is, the more out of balance the patient is, the more you have to work at deeper levels. And if you want to connect with a being at a deeper level, a lot of the intervention needs to be of minimum force. Here's a thought that your listeners could think about. Every second that you're listening to this conversation, there are approximately 8 million red blood cells that are being created and approximately 8 million red blood cells being broken down. And can you imagine if that was just off by one-tenth of one percent, you'd be dead within a matter of days. So whatever intelligence is guiding that is also guiding millions and millions and millions of other things at the same time without your conscious mind having to even think about it. So the the level of intelligence that's represented in the body is beyond any computer that we've been able to create yet. And it's a matter of learning to respect that and love that and cooperate with that intelligently that's going to lead to the kind of life and the kind of society that our heart really desires. Very nicely said. If there's anything else I can do to help you, I support where you're coming from. I support the particular product that you endorse. I've had an experience with it, and I I think it's very respectful but powerful at the same time. And if there's ever anything I can do for you or or for your listeners, just let me know. Thanks for listening, and for more information, go to my website, PEMFbook.com. You can instantly download three free chapters there. I always welcome your questions, comments, and feedback. Get in touch with me at pmfbook.com forward slash contact. I sincerely hope the information in these videos will help you in your quest for greater health, happiness, and well-being.